This video I've titled Introduction to Soil Strength. From our work in earlier videos, it may be apparent that soil strength is not a unique value, as it tends to be for steel and concrete, two materials that are specified by the engineer and carefully controlled during manufacture so their strength can be predicted with accuracy. The fact that this is not the case for soils can be disconcerting for young engineers. The reason for this is because soil is a natural material and as such it dictates the ground rules, if you excuse the pun. It's not uncommon to measure soil strengths on the same site that differ in value by an order of magnitude. For example, two tests on the same soil but sampled at different depths may give strengths that differ by 100%. If such variations were found from tests on steel, eyebrows would be raised. Typically, we would expect the strength of steel to vary by no more than a few percent. Why is it that geotechnical engineers are comfortable working within such a wide range of results, while the structural engineer prefers much greater certainty? We'll see that this has much more to do with the inherent variability in nature than a philosophical difference between the two disciplines. We've already seen in our geology video that the past loading history of the soil has an influence on its strength. We will now look at some other factors that influence soil strength and hopefully bring some clarity to a topic which appears so often to be shrouded in mystery. I'll start by drawing from your prior knowledge on Mohr circle for stress. Let's examine the strength of steel, concrete and soil. And while we're at it, we'll also show why static water has no strength. Starting with steel and adopting the convention that compressive stresses are positive because soils have no tensile strength. We can plot the failure of a specimen tested in tension. As the sample is stretched, there is no applied horizontal stress. The sample lengthens and starts to neck or reduce in diameter until it eventually fails at an ultimate tensile failure stress. Plotting this on our shear stress versus normal stress axis, the diameter of the Mohr circle at failure is determined by the distance from the origin, as there is no applied horizontal stress, to the failure stress in tension. Drawing the Mohr circle, we see the steel fails at a shear stress of tau SF. Next, let's represent the strength of concrete. Like soil, concrete strength resides in its compressive capacity. So strength tests are normally conducted by crushing cube or cylinder specimens. Again, these tests are conducted without the application of a horizontal confining stress, and so the strength is defined by the maximum compressive stress the sample can sustain. This time, the Mohr circle plots on the positive side of our normal stress axis, and we see the shear strength at failure occurs at tau. Now we move to soil. We are generally interested in the soil strength beneath a loaded area such as this. We note in this instance that the representative sample to be tested resides some distance d below ground level. This means the specimen has a horizontal confining stress applied to it. This is normally estimated as a certain proportion of the total overburden stress. Let's call it sigma h. The specimen is then subjected to an increasing vertical stress until it fails. The resulting Mohr circle plots like this, with the shear stress at failure equal to tau s. Note that while we have tested materials in different ways, each material fails at a particular shear strength. And so, shear strength becomes a useful characteristic strength to be used when assessing material behaviour. Oh, and yes, we said we'd show that stationary water has no shear strength. Well, we know that the pressure at a given depth in water is given by the unit weight of water times the height of water. We also know 
that this pressure is equal in all directions. So the Mohr circle plots as a single point on the normal stress axis, thus registering zero on the shear axis. Therefore, we can conclude that any material that can support its own weight has shear strength. Click here to continue with the next video.